Book of Aquarius Method Alchemy by Stephen School Alchemy YouTube channel. If you look up the seven steps of alchemy, internet search results suggest the first step is calcination. Book of Aquarius illuminates a certain substance worked upon. Digging into the depths of it. Doing the alchemy experiments I think is interesting because when I read the writings of the sages and the old alchemical manuscripts, they don't usually make sense. They don't even mention what they're working on. They'll go from one work to another without telling you. And so, one method of deciphering their writings that I've mentioned, that I've noticed is by doing the experiments, I can kind of compare the results that I get in the glass in the Alchemist Alembic to what I read in the ancient writings of the sages, the old medieval or ancient alchemical texts. It's interesting. It helps fit the pieces of the puzzle together. When I read a manuscript and it doesn't even mention what is worked upon or it just goes into the stages and mixes and matches them and and it goes on to a completely different work without saying anything. So in this instance, the Book of Aquarius illuminates a certain matter worked upon. According to internet search results, the first step of alchemy, the first of the seven steps of alchemy is calcination. And that is what is occurring here. I had this on my smaller blue hot plate, which only can reach 280 degrees Celsius. The big yellow hot plate can reach 400 degrees Celsius. It's currently at 335 degrees. So in reaching the higher temperature, I've noticed a little bit more difference than what the blue hot plate was producing. There was a little bit more impurities burned off because the scent came over the helm indicating this and also because there was a smoky vapor or fume risen in the cucurbit of the alchemical alembic. Let's go ahead and take a look at the alembic. This is an alchemist alembic for distillation. The matter is dry. It is in calcination. The heat is set. 335 degrees Celsius, but I'm going to turn it up hotter. 400 degrees Celsius is what we're approaching now. We can see in the glass a bit of smokiness, a bit of a uh, fume impurity burning off. If this hot plate doesn't get hot enough, I've got one more black hot plate that in my experience has been the hottest of the hot. The hottest of the hot. If this hot plate doesn't um, purify the ashes in heat, I don't have to move it outdoors to a black hot plate. We do see some volatile salts have risen in the alchemist glass. The fixed salts remain below in the ashes. The clear distillate came over the helm before we reached dryness. As a clear liquid, 
and this has left us with three substances, a clear distillate of volatile salt, and the kaput mortuary. The kaput mortuary can be called sulfur in alchemical terminology. It is, represents the earth and contains the fixed salt. And this is interesting if you look in the writings of Michael Sindabogius, some of his alchemical secret recipes that which he alludes to. In one of them, he mentions 11 parts our earth. Our earth. Our earth is going to be the part in the bottom of the curvet. The material, we could call it sulfur, could put mortuary, but it contains the fixed salt. And in alchemy, salt is considered the body. Therefore, the body, the fixed salt, the well purified fixed salt, our earth. This is not meant to describe only this experiment, but alchemy in general. When we speak of the three materials, the salt, sulfur, and mercury of the alchemist, not the elements at their face value, but philosophical elements, speaking of in code and riddle. Philosophical salt, sulfur, and mercury. Sulfur, then, would be the black, dark material, the black sun. The sun has turned black as sackcloth of hair, as it says in the Bible. It contains the fixed salt. And now we see a white vapor arising, as it were a white fume. In the writings of Theophrastus Paracelsus, he speaks of a white fume and a red fume. Will this work produce these fumes? I see a white fume in this work. I have not yet seen a red fume in this work. But I have taken this farther than what we see in this video. I have been farther in this path before. As far as seeing a phoenix risen from the ashes in the form of a white stone. And those old experiments were not recorded in pictures or video. Therefore, I hope to reconstruct the experiment and record it. This is Alchemy of Stephen's School, not for consumption. The impurities are burning off more in the heat now. I see color change in the glass. I see a little bit more gray or white in the blackness. The blackness is lightening up. We have a white fume arising at 400 degrees Celsius. Working on the matter illuminated by the Book of Aquarius. I don't necessarily follow Book of Aquarius methods. I use my own alchemy methods. But the thing that this has in common with the Book of Aquarius is the well-known the well-known subject matter worked upon. That identifies what is being worked upon. We see that after distillation, we have calcination. Many people have suggested that the steps of alchemy were recorded 
out of order, not in the proper order, which makes sense because with this matter, to get to the calcination, we must first have the distillation. We are in the course of purification by heat. I see no red fume in this work. I do see a white fume. Some alchemical manuscripts mention like unto the congelation of a frosty vapor. After the vessel cools, they speak of finding a white hard rime in the neck of the distillation vessel, like unto the congelation of a frosty vapor, which in these works fits that description of the volatile salt. Some people have suggested that perhaps the stone is nothing but a vapor. Interesting. Subscribe for updates as we continue on into the journey into the depths of alchemy. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.